your door. So we're in Morlinch Church today, which is in Somerset on the Polton Hills. It's a beautiful old church with a history, and we're going to take you around. Now, Morlinch means Pleasant Hill in Saxon, Old English Saxon. <laughs> Shut that door. What? Shut that door. So here we are on the gallery of uh, Morlinch Church. And on the right here on the wall, we have a lovely old um, painting of the coat of arms for George III. Um, also, there's a lovely old painting here with my guest. Uh, Mary and Je jo Jesus as a baby and one of his brothers and sisters, I'm not sure about that. But a lovely view from above. This is the vestry where you have the, the ropes and the bells. And there's some very interesting old bells here. We can't unfortunately see the bells, but we can tell you about it. Bells of Morlinch. They probably rung out over Sedgemoor from the Tower of Morlinch Church as early as the 15th century. The acquisition of the six bells is an unusual one. Morlinch, Stowell, Chilton, Polden, Catcott, Eddington, Grainton, and Sutton Mallet were known as the Seven Sisters and were the property of the abbots of Glastonbury before the dissolution of the monasteries. There was much jealousy between the Seven Sisters as to who should have the honour of being the mother church that an abbot had to decide which parish should possess a peal of bells. In his wisdom, the abbot decided that a peal should go to the first parish where, there, where three children were born and three people died. Very rapidly, three babies were born in each of the parish and Stale Stowell felt certain it would claim the prize. So the villagers began building their church tower ready for the peel. Now we saw the church tower earlier on, so it's quite lucky they didn't get them so that they finished it. But before it was finished, three people died in Morlinch, which explains why Stowell has a stubby tower and Morlinch possesses a fine peel of bells. There you go. Take two. Okay, so here is one of the finest examples of a Davis organ. And there's probably not one as good as this in the country. And the BBC have actually been out here to look at this organ and how magnificent it is. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm not sure what sort of wood it is, but it's absolutely squares within squares, tiny on the floor, which as usual is always around and about. And here is a very uh, old 1663, this one. Um, sorry, 1665, from the Durston family. And there's um, some different Durstons along the time. And a story we told that actually um, recently a, another Durston came and was to be married here. Um, and his name was Thomas, as well as his father's name was Thomas. And also we have the Christogram again on the wall from well, the last video and the lovely stained glass windows either side. And also there's something here, along with Barrow, we haven't done Barrow yet, 
And this is what is known as a leper squint, just over here. What is it you're looking at, Phil? This is gap here. Now, originally, we'll show you from outside that there was a way for them to see in because the lepers weren't allowed in with the rest of the congregation, obviously through fear of them catching leprosy. So we'll go outside and have a look. But we just want to want to show you how beautiful... Oh, last but not least, oh. we have these... We have these Jacobean pews, and they're very rare because usually... You have Jacobean ends, but the actual benches of these pews are usually being taken away um, long, long ago. But all of these pews down there... They're still original. Yeah, they're all original. So. Oh, so we just have a look at the ends of the pews. Yeah, and this one uh, is yeah. different, isn't it? Because the three it's... three chevrons, which is usually sh- sergeants uh, in the British Army. It's certainly a sign of they're... someone with a bit more power than important, should we say. And they've also got the little carvings on the back. Oh, yeah. Which is different than all the other pews. Yeah. Yeah, only one like that. And uh, we'd like to say thank you to James Stryker, who guided us yeah, thank you around much, the church. James. And uh, in we, great help. We were going to go and show you the old high cross. And also... A and James Dog, lovely little Jack Russell. Chippy. 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 And Hello, And Jane... Do you think you could tell us why, and we've noticed around the church, these, these little American flags? What's the story behind that? Any minute now, we are expecting the arrival of 43 Americans from St. Peter's Church in Geneva, upstate New York. Oh, OK. And they have been coming since 1998, every four years. Yeah. And the 22 choristers between the ages of 12 and 17, I think they are. And they will do a concert in our church tonight. And they have 21 chaperones. But all the choristers have been housed either in this village or the villages within our benefice. Fantastic. And the adults will go and stay at Mullions in Street. Oh, I know, yes. And um, ironically, they first came in 1998. And our grandson was born in February. He was born in May of 1998. Yeah. And this year, he works at Mullions, so he's been organising all their accommodation, meals and things like that. So it just goes to show that 25 years later... <laughs> yeah. That's a fantastic story. And then tomorrow they'll go and sing at Oseby Church. Oh, okay. the service there. And then in the evening, we have a big supper and some entertainment at Stall. So everybody goes to that. Excellent. Well, thanks That's a brilliant story. story. the side of the hill and we're just going to go and look at this um high cross over here well it's an amalgamation of three three different crosses the three first, different periods of time yeah the, first, the top part is medieval we're unsure about the middle part so i reckon could be georgian could be could be anything really yeah yeah and the bottom part is victorian we're going to have a look and it's a listed national uh, English heritage monument you threw your voice there Phil you sounded just like Jane so you go thank you thank you Jane ah so here we go right we yeah medieval unknown Victorian it's quite interesting, they've got these pins. I don't know what's underneath it. Yeah, it's like they're kind of like stapled together so it doesn't yeah. fall to pieces. And then in the, in the, in the garden, the next garden, we're all down there now actually, we can show you. Yeah. There's a fish cross which was originally up on the hill on the crossroads where they used to sell the fish 
which they they catch from the inland sea, which some say was the original Sea of Galilee. But <clears throat> well, we will find out. And this is a, a view across the Somerset Plains levels. Quite wet at the moment, as is traditional. The flooding. Okay, last but not least, this here is what was known as a fish cross. We had a cross on top of here, and this was like a marketplace for the selling of fish from the local, all this flat area around here with all the water. So I had an inland sea, like I said, the Sea of Galilee. It's a shame it's no longer whole, but yeah. uh, I suppose it was like a marker. You would have seen it from miles away, wouldn't you? What yeah. sort of fish would they have sold here? Um, sea fish. What? Well, oh, so Selfish. Not not selfish fish. No, I'm joking. I um. Not. I don't know. I freshwater don't, fish. I don't know because it's an inland sea. What about those plastic fish you get in crackers? I'm you not, know the red ones because I haven't seen any this year, so I didn't know if they'd. We're on the decline. Might be. I'm not sure about that. Uh, we'll have to find out. We'll start up a new fund for that one. Yeah, we'll anyway, investigate that then further the video. Orange. As I said, Pleasant Hill, and it certainly is. Gorgeous church. The area. Fantastic. Gorgeous church. Nice people. Very friendly. Check out Morlinch. Yeah, come if you can. Mm -hmm.